Hi everyone, it's Daniel here for Design Break, and today we're going to take a look at how to build this typographic stair effect inside of Webflow with no custom code. Alright, so this is the effect. It's basically this um, three lines of type, and as you scroll, they kind of peel over the, the corner here. I've added a gradient to this just so you can, it looks kind of like a cube. Um, or a cuboid, so you can see how the, the text will scroll over the text there. So let's just jump into how to create this. Okay, so we're in a blank Webflow project. I've set up a couple of styles, but I'll explain those as I go along. Um, so the first thing I'll do is create a section here, because um, everything we're going to create is going to be inside the section. Um, and then I'm going to create a couple more sections just so we have a bit of scroll room, because uh, this is going to be a scroll linked animation. Uh, so I'll create this one and I'll give this a uh, class of full height, which just gives it a minimum height of 100 bh, um, and we'll duplicate that as well. Then this first section is where we're going to actually build our um, animation. So we'll give this a class of stairs, um, and then what you're going to want to do is give that a position fixed, um, and then fix it to the top. And that's going to mean this section sticks to the top so that our animation stays with us even when we're scrolling. Um, okay, so next we want to grab a text block and we'll put that in here. And then this is where we want to put in our three lines of text. Uh, so this text is going to be duplicated, uh, but I'll show you a way at the end that you can make it so that you don't have to retype this um, three different times. Um, and basically it makes it really easy to make this changeable uh, in the future. So I'm going to give this a class. Um, I've already set up a class of stair heading here. All I've basically done is um, give this a size of 7 viewport width, 1 EM uh, line height, and taking the letter spacing down and made it all caps. This effect looks better when it's um, when the text is block capitals. So Okay, so we've, we've got our, our heading text. Now what we want to do is create another uh, div block, and then we're going to put our heading inside this div block. And this is going to be kind of the mask that allows only one line to show for each element. So if I give this a class of first line uh, new, so it doesn't conflict with the old class I was working with earlier. So what I want to do is give this a height of, we'll say seven viewport width for now. Um, then we want to change the overflow to hidden. And then what we're going to do is just now, um, I'm just going to duplicate the um, this wrapper three times for our three lines. Um, and then when it, to make things a bit easier when it comes to uh, making this 3D, I'm going to just change the, duplicate these classes and give them new, new names. So I'll call this one second line. And the third one is going to be, you guessed it, third line new. Okay, so I think the next thing to do would be to set up the animation just so you can see how things are working, see what's going on. It makes it a bit easier to understand. So if we select this uh, section underneath, this is our first like scrollable section. And we give this uh, while scrolling in view animation, play a scroll animation, create a new one. We'll just call this uh, stairs. Now what we want to do is select stair heading class or stair heading item here. Um, go move 0% in here and then 100%, uh, sorry, minus 100% it will be. Um, down there. And we just want to make sure this says all elements with this class so that all three of them will move at the same time. And if we preview, you can see it's a bit janky, but everything is staying within its mask and it's moving as it should do. So the first thing we need to do is fix the uh, animation so that when it starts when fully visible, it scrolls to when fully invisible. So now you see we've got text and it's scrolling there. So Obviously, this is three lines of the same text, and we want it to be one line of each uh, item. So the way we do that is by adding negative uh, margin to the top of each of these different ones here. So for this second one, we'll give this a combo class of second. Um, and then here, we've just added minus uh, seven viewport width to the top of the um, to the top of that item. The same goes for this one here. We'll give it a class of third. And then this one's going to be minus 14 viewport width. And that keeps everything nice and neat. So now if we preview the animation, you can see that you, you actually can't tell. It just looks like the text is scrolling. 
but actually it is scrolling through three different divs that are all kind of maxed, uh, sorry, all kind of masked. The next point at this stage is to start making this sort of 3D. Now, I've, I've, um, the effect I went for was kind of orthographic. So I'm not actually using the like 3D rotate and ch child perspective and that kind of thing. I'm just using the skew and rotate uh, for this function. So if we select the first line new, and then we come down here to 2D and 3D transforms, the first thing you're going to want to do is skew this uh, on the x-axis by um, 30 degrees. And then you're going to want to rotate it by minus 30 degrees. So you can see that's kind of giving you a flat. Um, and if you preview that and scroll, you can see you're starting to get somewhere with that effect. Um, then the we actually want to do the exact same transform for the last one, because you can see when we look at this, that the, the first one and the last one are on the same kind of plane, if you like. So we'll take the last one. We will skew this um, 30 and rotate it back by 30. Now, one really important thing to note is that it does matter what order these are in. Um, so if you do the skew first, you'll see that that's uh, the result you get there. So it, it does matter whether you skew it or rotate it first. So you need your rotation first and your skew second. And so the second line, the middle one here, is going to be slightly different. Okay, so we're going to skew this one by negative uh, 30. And then we're also going to rotate this by negative 30 as well. Okay, perfect. So if we preview this now, you'll see that what we kind of have is like nearly there, but it's, um, it's obviously not looking quite right yet. Okay, so what we need to do now is line these up so they're not all left aligned. So we'll start with the second one because uh, the first one can kind of stay where it is. So uh, we'll start with YouTube, which is the second line here, and then selecting this class, we're going to add one more transform. Now move needs to be the last uh, transform here. So I'll just put something uh, arbitrary in here, kind of six um, viewport width, because everything else has been done by viewport width. And you can see that what's happening when we do this first is that um, the, the transform here is happening after the, the other two have been applied, or kind of on top of, if you like. So what we need to do is just move these above so that the move is the, the sort of bottom one. And now you'll see if I move this, it's kind of moving it along that axis. So if we line this up uh, roughly where we think it's going to be, I'm going to say maybe 4.4, something like that. Um, so we're going to have to kind of play about with the sizing here to get it to, to, to work perfectly. Um, and then we'll just do the last one kind of roughly just now as well. So we'll click on the third line add another uh, move transform. Um, and again, we'll do this one by high viewport width. And make sure it's the last thing. And maybe move that up to say, um, just for now, let's put nine viewport width. Um, so if we preview now, this is the text we've got, and as you scroll, you can see that it's it, until it's until it's perfectly lined up, it still looks like it's a bit of a mess. But the the general idea of the effect is there. As we scroll, you can see the text is moving. So now comes the slightly fiddly part of lining up these text items so that they match up perfectly. Okay, so I've been through the fiddly process just now of um, adjusting this, and I'm just going to show you what figures I ended on. Um, so I had to move these uh, along the x-axis and also on the y-axis as well. You can see that even I had to get kind of specific with the, um, the number there. I've done everything in viewport width so that it kind of scales um, with the browser. So, so that's it done now. And you can see if I preview this effect that the, um, the text just kind of peels over the edge of the stairs there. So that's the basic effect. One thing to know from the original version is that I left less space on the top and bottom, so it kind of creates a more um, cohesive kind of together effect. This one is a bit more kind of spaced out. So the last little trick is a method for very easily uh, creating alternates of this, but that have different text in them that you can just edit in one location, and that takes care of that. And the way to do this is by making it into a symbol. So if we create this, uh, to take this top section here, for example, and we um, create a symbol, we'll just call this stair text. 
Um, and then what I want to do here is create an override field here called text, leave it as multi-line, um, and then I'll add the text in here as design break return YouTube return channel, um, like that. And um, that's just kind of the default text that it's going to show. Um, so what we want to do now is go into the symbol. Um, so we're already inside the symbol. Go to stair heading. And then here it says link to field. We're going to want to link it to our text field. And then we want to expand the second line and the third line, take the heading from both of these, and also link them to the text file. OK, excellent. So that's all three of the, the text uh, fields linked. If we X out of this symbol now, we preview the animation. You can see that it's still working. If we now click the cog icon, we've got these uh, this text editor here. And if we want to say, um, please subscribe to us. Um, and then preview. Now you can see the animation still works. Um, and you've got that really easy way of changing it up and uh, using it on other pages if you wanted to, for example. Just make sure, obviously, that you have your animation um, linked to the, the section. Well, that was helpful. That was just kind of a, an effect. I should mention that I've, I found this effect uh, on an architect's website. I think it was a Los Angeles-based architect. But I can't find it again for the life of me, so if somebody knows the site. Uh, all credit to them for coming up with the idea for it. I just thought I would recreate it in Webflow for a bit of fun. Oh, just as a quick side note, the clonable for this project will be linked in the description. So if you want to grab that, you can just head down there and uh, follow the link to Webflow. So if you did like the video, please hit like and subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more content like this. And we will see you in the next one.